Hey, what's going on you guys matrox gaming here and welcome to today's video this is going to be a real fun video today we're doing a character analysis video on the man jason todd himself whom you may know as red hood this is a character analysis video that i've actually wanted to do for a very long time now and just never really got enough support from you guys to be able to do that and now i'm getting a few support from some fellow subscribers so yeah here we go we're finally going to do it now, Red Hood is a character who is also split down the middle of the DC fan base, with the mixed opinion of whether you love him or hate him. Now, me personally, Jason Todd is easily one of my top five favorite DC characters, and it's not even just because of the fact that he's an edgy anti-hero character, and while I do normally tend to like anti-heroes a little bit more, this one is a special one to me. I do really like Red Hood as a character because I find him extremely relatable and find him to be the example of a compelling, tragic hero who decides to take matters into his own hands. Now, just because I say that doesn't mean I'm going to be dick riding the character, at least not intentionally anyway. So keep in mind that if it ever comes off that way, that I'm just stating facts and nothing I say will ever change that. So if you understand all of that, awesome. Let's get to talking about Red Hood. Now, there's two different places that we can start with Red Hood. There's what he was doing before he became Batman's second Robin, and then there was his death at the hands of the Joker. Let's go on ahead and start with the former. Jason Todd was a kid on the streets of Gotham, where he was pretty much doing things to fend for himself. This all changed when he came across the Batmobile and tried taking apart the rims, presumably so that he can sell them. Of course, this instead resulted in him being taken in by Batman and being trained as the second Robin. And for those who may be new to DC, the first Robin was Dick Grayson, the same Robin you may have seen in a Teen Titans TV show and also Teen Titans Go. This is also the same Robin who also became Nightwing and in one story also ended up becoming Batman. And Jason Todd was his successor, so yeah, now that we cleared that up, let's get back to Red Hood. As Batman's second Robin, he definitely seemed like a real go-getter, a highly motivated Robin who genuinely loved what he did. He unfortunately rubbed some fans the wrong way, however, because this went to the extent of him being very arrogant, it seemed, and this is where we get to the point that really made a huge change of character for him, when Jason Todd was killed by the Joker. See, back then, the DC writers had a poll for whether Jason should survive or not, and as assumed, the fans voted to kill him off out of extreme disdain for the character. This is where everything changed, however, as we end up finding out Jason Todd was resurrected and this was unknown to Batman for a while. If you've seen the Batman Under the Red Hood movie, you know what I'm talking about. The comics goes a little further in depth about this, but I'll be referencing the movie just for the sake of simplicity. When Batman first meets Red Hood, he witnesses Red Hood kill a few members of a gang and rallying and uniting many of Gotham's criminals under him. When called out for being a crime lord by Batman, Red Hood responds saying that that was the whole point. He knows Batman can't stop crime from happening, so Red Hood decides to take it upon himself to at least be in control of it. This is where we see Red Hood, just like Batman, has established his own code of morals and does whatever he has to do to protect Gotham and its citizens in his own twisted way. In the same exact scene, we see Red Hood say the one thing that completely questions Batman's competence as a hero and what he does in some situations. Red Hood says to Batman, and I quote, You want to rule them by fear, but what do you do with the ones who aren't afraid? I'm doing what you won't. I'm taking them out. Red Hood's entire mission isn't just to protect Gotham by killing criminals. See, he also wants to beat Batman to show him that his methods of being a hero do not work. And it's understandable why he thinks this way, as he literally took up the name that was once used by the Joker, the same man who killed him ironically enough. Now some might wonder why Jason is so obsessed with killing criminals, with some people literally saying it's because he was killed by the Joker, a criminal but I personally believe that it goes a lot further in depth than that. Being killed by the Joker makes him develop a fear of not just the Joker, but of criminals in general. He believes criminals deserve no mercy and decides to kill them before any of them become even worse like the man he hates the most. And this hatred for the Joker is literally shown in the movie. Some people like to think that Red Hood's relationship with Batman was heavily strained because Batman didn't save him or avenge him, but this just isn't true. In the movie, Red Hood states that he isn't mad at Batman for being unable to save him, but he instead asks him why the Joker is still alive. He even proceeds to say later that he thought he'd be the last person Batman would ever let the Joker hurt. But think of it this way, Red Hood isn't the only person important to Batman. The entire Bat family means something to him. Jason thought that even if it wasn't him, had it been Nightwing, Red Robin, Batgirl, or anyone else in the Bat family, Batman would decide to end the Joker for harming any of them. And Jason knows that Batman is aware of this. Heck, he knows that Joker crippled Barbara Gordon, who is Batgirl, and killed Jason. So to Jason, this should hit Batman harder than anything else. 
Batman views the entire Bat family as his family, his children. Hell, one of them actually was his son, Damian Wayne. He saw Dick Grayson as a son, and treated each Robin after him with love and respect. So to Jason, the fact that Joker is still alive after one of Batman's children dies at his hand made him think Batman is more willing to let more people die just so that his own moral code remains intact. And this is where I have to fully agree with Jason. As much as I love Batman as both a character and a role model, Jason has a point here. Say what you want about Batman and Joker needing each other, but Batman wanting to remain pure to his morals inevitably lets more and more people be killed by his arch nemesis, and Jason knows that Joker constantly takes advantage of that. So to Jason, Batman is a failure of a hero and decides that killing criminals and protecting Gotham in his place is the right thing to do. Yes, Jason is a little twisted for it, but is he wrong? Just Think about it. Jason even says he doesn't care about Bane, Riddler, or anyone else like that. It's the Joker he has a problem with. And remember, it's the Joker who murdered him, so it's not like Jason doesn't have any reason to think this way. So this tells you that not only does Jason choose to kill criminals simply because it's the right thing to do, he does it because he clearly struggles with severe PTSD, and it's understandable because instead of a quick and merciful death, he was mercilessly beaten to death by the Joker with a crowbar. So this could make him not only develop a fear of the Joker, he probably kills criminals because he developed a genuine fear of criminals, probably fearing any of them could end up just like the Joker. I know a lot of people like to shit on Red Hood for being a very edgy character, but I don't think this is a bad thing, per se. Jason has a reason to be this way. His character really is tragic, and he's been through a lot. He's pretty much forced to develop a very cynical outlook on the world because to him, if he can't trust the person who took him in when he had nowhere to go, then he can't trust anybody. And with all of his morals and twisted outlook on how to deal with Gotham and its criminals, this definitely puts him in the darkest of gray lines in the anti-hero trope. If you saw my video on Harley Quinn, you probably know what this means. Jason definitely qualifies as a Type 5 anti-hero, also known as the hero in name only. He develops a personality somewhat like a sociopath, from his early beginnings in Gotham streets, to being killed by the Joker, to mercilessly killing criminals in the most brutal ways at times definitely shows that he has sociopathic tendencies, but even despite that, he also has his rules when he kills. I'm not sure if this was stated anywhere else, but in Injustice 2, he has a conversation with one of the other characters stating he chooses to not kill women or children. So to pretty much sum up everything he's dealt with, he goes from the mindsets of I need to make a living, to I'm gonna help Batman, to I need to be Gotham's sole protector alone. So hopefully this video gives you a better understanding of Jason's character and how he deals with everything on his plate. This video was plenty of fun to make, so hopefully you guys enjoy it, and if you did, be sure to leave a like on this video, leave a comment below as to what character you'd like to see me analyze next, and subscribe to the channel because I do analysis videos on these kinds of characters all the time, so if you want to see more, just subscribe and it'll help me out a lot. And before I close out this video, I do want to say the one thing I'd really like to see is a live-action standalone rated R Red Hood movie. One that's dark, gritty, bloody, edgy, and maybe even a little controversial. Batman can have a small appearance, but a movie with Red Hood as the main character is a must-need at some point. Anyway, that's all for today, guys. Matrix Gaming out. Peace.